Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. So, oh, it's actually starting to rain. <laughs> I just come out into my garden to film this little update. How bad is it gonna be? It's not gonna be too bad, let's get on with it. So here we go, Goldcrest, before and after. I went into my local wood, just for a wander around near sunset, see what I could pick up. With the new DxO software, I was hoping for birds in darker conditions and I could really test the software. And it just so happened near the end of the day, Goldcrest showed up, a flock of them started bouncing around me to the point that my 200 to 800 millimeter zoom lens, I had to zoom all the way back to 300, 400 millimeters to get them in because they were landing right next to me and jumping around eating insects. It was, it was amazing. And what I don't get is why so many Goldcrests appearing at the moment. It, I've never known it like this. Anyway, we were working at about 12,800 ISO up to 16,000 ISO. When I'm not zoomed all the way out to 800 millimeters, my lens is probably sharper when it's zoomed back a little bit. But because I was filling the frame, the camera was picking up the feather detail. So DxO had something to work with. If you look at these before and after images, it is unbelievable. If you'd have gone back 10 years and said these were ISO 100, I'd have agreed with you. And anybody that sees anything different, I mean, I don't know what you want. This is a perfectly acceptable quality of photo. You can see all of the feather detail. I've seen images from full frame cameras with lenses that are worth £10,000, $10,000, and they're not as sharp as this, they're not as clear as this. It's a mixture of they don't really do any post-processing, they just upload the JPEG, or they don't know how to take a photo, or they're simply just not using software like this, which even when you've got the best camera and the best lens, I think we can all agree still need a little bit of post, even if it's just adjusting the colors slightly. So check out the link to my first video where I talk about DxO. They've given me a referral code, which is simply StormCab. I've said it before, I'm gonna do more videos about this over time as I have more and more success and I start pushing the boundaries up to 20,000 and 32,000 ISO. I'll quickly show you a couple of things I did the other day. This stone chat jumping off the post was taken at 32,000 ISO. Now, it's a bit of a crop, Therefore, the, there's a bit of detail lost in the bird as it was moving. But if you look at the post it jumped from, that is stunning. I think I'm actually going to do some tests using that post down at my local reserve because they contain so much lovely detail that will be perfect for showing you the effects of the DxO software, how much detail it can retain. Can't wait. Later on that day, a kingfisher landed in front of me in near darkness and I was at 32,000 ISO. And I suppose I could have, I was at 2000 shutter speed. I could have gone down on that, but I just shot some pictures because I knew if I took my time messing around trying to get the shutter speed down, the bird could have flown. So I just got what I could. Luckily I did because it was gone. Now there's a bit of a crop and this image is processed at 32,000 ISO. And you think, well, it's not great, is it? No, it's not. But I will say it was distant, so I had to crop it. I think the next time I get some bird photos, if I can get them filling the frame so the camera can capture the feather detail, even at a high ISO, the software could still make it look like ISO 800, maybe even 400, because I've taken photos of birds that distant before in a lower ISO, and because of that distance, you're not gonna get as much detail as you think you're gonna get. So have you been using DxO since I've mentioned it, or were you a user before I mentioned it? By all means, show me some links to your work. I'd love to see the differences and the things that you've achieved. For now, what I do is I import the photo into the software and then I convert it to DNG by just adding the deep prime setting and the lens correction setting. And once I get that DNG file, the only adjustments I'll make after that would be in the Unsharp mask. A bit of radius, a bit of intensity. I just play with those sliders. I'll be zoomed in at 100% to see where it goes too far and it looks overly sharpened and where it's slightly too soft and just play with that. I might slightly correct the color balance. Most other things I leave the same because that's what I saw on the day. That was what was in front of me. And Canon is pretty good at capturing the exact color temperature at the time I take the picture. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed that little catch up with uh, my experiences with DxO. Again, let me know your experiences with it. And the, the funny thing is, it's actually made me want to go out more closer to sunset than in the middle of the day, because I just want to be amazed at how well DxO can handle high ISO files. It's brilliant. <laughs>